crafters for today's DIY, we will be making watermelon tiered tray decor. I'm Daniela with DD's Art Workshop and if you like staying on a budget and DIYs, this channel is for you. So don't forget to subscribe. These DIYs are part of the fruity tiered tray decor, open playlist hosted by Missy from Crafty Cove DIY, Charlotte from Crafting Up A Storm, and Emily from Farm Charm Chic and check out the playlist to meet more makers. Our first DIY is a mini rustic watermelon sack. I had this crap ribbon and it's like a burlap ribbon. It's a really thick one and I'm gonna be using it to make my sack. I'm folding it in half and I am gonna be gluing with my hot glue gun the sides and make sure you use those finger protectors because you don't wanna burn yourself. And I'm gonna be turning it over once my glue is dry. Once my little baggie is turned over, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the excess because my ribbon was all crooked and all lopsided. And now I'm gonna be using this white acrylic paint to paint my watermelon. And I'm gonna start with a very thin brush and my base is gonna be, or my first layer is gonna be in white. Now I am ready to add a little bit of red and I'm gonna go ahead and show you the red I'm using in a bit. I forgot to show you guys the red, but I'll show you guys that in a bit. And I really like this red. The brand is Folk Art. That is my favorite go-to brand. It goes on very, very nicely. It's my favorite acrylic brand. If you have another favorite one, please let me know. It's actually a little bit better than Craft Smart. I'm not a big fan of Craft Smart. And these are the two that I am gonna be using. And as you can see, um, the red one is Folk Art. And this green, I really didn't like it, but it's what I already had at home, but um, it's gonna work just fine because I've already done a layer of white, so it's gonna go on just fine. And of course, to speed up the process, I'm gonna blow dry my painting. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of black and I'm gonna go ahead and just do like a dry brush. And I'm gonna do some shading just so it looks a little bit more rustic. And I'm gonna do a little bit of black on the red and a little bit on the green and just where I see it's needed. And this is just gonna give it more of a rustic look and I think it turned out beautiful. So make sure you stay till the end. Now with the white, I'm gonna do the same concept, a dry brush, and I'm just gonna shade a little bit of the middle of my watermelon. Now with my black acrylic paint, I'm actually using this black paint from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna make my little watermelon seeds and I'm just gonna be making three of these. Now I decided to add another little detail, so I'm gonna be making little white flowers. And I'm just gonna be making two of these with the back of my paintbrush. I am doing the little petals, just like so. And you guys, what I love about this DIY is that you don't have to be the best artist. This is very simple art, and it doesn't have to be perfect. This little flower is all gonna come together once we add that little middle yellow part so here i am just doing the little stem with the petals with a very very fine brush and it's already coming together now let's do our second one I'm gonna be using this moon yellow in folk art to do the center of my flower. And it looks so, so cute, y'all. I also had some fiber fill, but you can also use some cotton balls and just stuff it inside of your little sack and tie with some twine. And look how adorable this is looking, you guys. It's so cute for a tiered tray decor. It's so miniature and so adorable. I did say this DIY cost a dollar, but I think it's much less because it is from Scrap Ribbon. Our second DIY is a mini watermelon pot. I purchased this little miniature pot at 
at Dollar Tree. I had it in my craft stash and we're going to be using that same grass green we used earlier and we're going to be painting the very top of our little pot. And with the same apple red we used earlier, we're going to go ahead and paint the bottom part. Now with a permanent marker or a paint marker or paint, just go ahead and do your little seats. I'm going to be using paint for this part. I decided to add a little bit of green with this lime green in Folgart and I'm going to be just dry brushing the top just to give it a little bit more of a texture or just shading whatever you want to call it but it just makes it look so much prettier and not as plain. I had a little bit of floral foam and these are just little scraps I didn't use. I'm just going to be cutting a few pieces and just putting it at the bottom. Now I had this succulent also at home. I'm going to put it at the top and I purchased these little umbrellas at Dollar Tree. They were just too cute to pass up and I thought it would just be cute to just add as a little detail. I don't know. I think this looks so adorable and so ready for summer. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Our third DIY is a mini birdhouse. I had made this little house in another video and the video is $1 spring home decor. Make sure to check out that video. But I'm going to make over this little house and I'm going to be using that same green we used earlier and I'm going to paint the roof, just the roof in green. And you guys, here's a little tip. If you just go over with paint in an area you do not want, get a little wet wipey and it'll wipe right off before it's dry, of course. And I always like to have little baby wipes handy because they they are so, so ideal for removing extra paint that you don't want and it just removes it and it wipes it right off. Now with the same red, we've been using that bright, nice folk art red. We're going to be painting two of the sides of the little birdhouse. Now I was debating whether to paint it all in red, like all the bottom part in red, but I decided not to because I want to leave that home letters on there it just looks pretty so i'm gonna leave that front part in white with a lighter green which is lime green the one i've been using in my projects i'm gonna paint that bottom part and right here i'm only doing the edges but later i'm just gonna do the whole bottom part in green because you know how that goes you end up changing your mind you don't like how it looks and the same thing goes for the top part i decided to paint the border in the same green as i did the roof because i didn't like how it looked in white I wanted the roof of my little birdhouse to look like the cover or the outer part of the watermelon so I'm gonna add some squiggly lines with that lime green and we're gonna just let that dry and we're gonna add a little bit of white and you'll see how I'm gonna do that fairly simple and it just adds a very special design and touch and it makes it look like a watermelon. Once that red is dry, I want to make sure it's really dry. I'm going to be using my paint marker and doing my little seeds. You can use a permanent marker. I just really like the way the paint marker looks like actual paint. Now to add a little bit of shading or texture or whatever, I'm going to add a little bit of white. Just slightly add to the bottom. 
and of course don't forget to seal your work so it lasts longer and this is the final look and make sure to stick to the end for you to see how it looks on my tear tray our fourth diy is a one dollar summer vibes mini sign which i purchased at dollar tree i thought this little sign was super cute and it is a wind chime a diy wind chime which i might actually go and buy another one to actually make it a wind chime but it had all these little extra pieces it comes with the little chimes and with some paint and a little paintbrush i've used these paints before and they're actually not bad quality but i'm actually going to use the ones i've been using and we're going to go ahead and use that same full got red and paint the red part of the watermelon and as you can see it goes on so well you're only going to be needing one coat for this Now let me tell you guys what happened here. I ended up using this yellow for my letters for the summer, the word summer, and I didn't like it at all. I didn't like how it looked in the end. It was very messy. So I actually recommend you using a darker color and probably do the background first before you do the letters. This was a complete mess, the, the word summer, but you guys will see in the end and you let me know what you think. I'm going to be using my paint marker for the word vibes and I did like the way the word vibes came out. I should have done the word summer in black it's like I did vibes but I don't know why I decided to do it a different color or maybe I should have done the word summer after I did the background. I don't know what I did wrong but anyway this is the way it looks. I'm adding a little bit of light green like a lime green that we used earlier and I'm adding a little bit of shading to that bottom part like we've been doing to our other watermelons and I'm gonna be doing the little seeds in a sharpie I didn't have a thinner paint marker because I'm out of those they ran out of ink but I need to buy more and I'm gonna be doing the background in this pink which is baby pink in full guard. Now, I don't know why I did this guys, but I painted the whole thing in pink and it was very, very bulky because I had already done the word summer in yellow. So this isn't gonna look so great. I really didn't like it that much, but this is what I had to work with. And I did the letters in black and I regretted it. I should have, now I think I should have done like a darker orange just to match the yellow a little better. Oh well, this is what we have. <laughs> and I had this glitter. Glitter makes everything better and prettier, I think, or fixes it a little. It kind of just camouflages the mistake. I don't know. I decided to just cover it in glitter just to see if it'll make it prettier. And it did help a bit, but I still, I don't like the word summer, but let me know what you guys think. But I think in the end it wasn't as bad um, once I saw it all come together. I had these little Jenga blocks, I glued them together and I'm gonna just glue my sign tilted on it that way it could just stand on its own and it's gonna be perfect for my tiered tray. And this is the final look, let me know what you think. Our fifth DIY is a sweet sign that cost us only a dollar to make. I had these little blocks in my craft stash and it comes with a whole other blocks. I don't remember how many come in a pack. They are from Dollar Tree and I'm going to be painting two little blocks in red and three in green. Now this is probably the easiest and more simplest DIY in this video, but I'm going to be using this white marker to write the word sweet and I did purchase this at Dollar Tree, but I thought the white wasn't really popping too much, so I decided to use this gold paint marker I had at home and I actually liked the way this one looked better. It just really shows brighter on the little blocks and it just looks super super cute. 
Now, even though this is so simple, once you see it all come together, it's just gonna really, really look adorable, guys. And this is the final look, you guys. Let me know what you think. Once you see it all together, it just all goes, right? I don't know, I love it, you guys. And you can just use it as a tiered tray for your home, for summer, or for a party. I don't know, you guys, you can just do so much with it. Each of these DIYs cost about a dollar to make. Well, 125, because Dollar Tree is one. 25 now but i think it looks so so cute the little felt watermelon i made a while back let me know if you'd like to see a diy on that one that little fence is from michael's i purchased it a while back and painted in white i added some little sunflowers from dollar tree that i had at home the tray is actually from target make sure to check out your target dollar spot and a cute hello summer sign from dollar tree these diys remind me of galatians 5 but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace for baby kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control against such things there is no law. remember to spread love kindness and stay crafty